Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have one of the people, well, actually, I say two people from our podcast team, and they have a great podcast on our, they're doing a series right now. So if you go onto their podcast, you'll see a load of podcasts with great advice, you know, to help families and children grow in a positive manner and elevate to the next level of life so they can become the future, the positive future of the next generation. And today they're here again, and it's Audra and it's Matt Karam. And <laughs> and they are here today to talk about the affirmation of positive thinking and how positivity makes a humongous impact on people's lives. So they're going to go a little more in depth and they have some great strategies and tools they're going to share with you that make huge impact on people's lives. So Audra, Matt, take it away. Oh, thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, Stacey. thanks for having us. We really I appreciate love it. it. I love having you guys on. Yeah, we just wanted to kind of uh, broach the subject and have that, uh, you know, a conversation with you and and maybe it, uh, help the listeners kind of understand the the power of, you know, positive self-talk. Um, we've both met people over the years and when we talk with our with children and adults uh, as well as you know, what is an affirmation and, and why do we do them and do they really work? And it's kind of, some people think it's hokey, mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, we believe they have a lot of power. And so we just wanted to kind of address that and add value and, and let folks know that, you know, the, the things we say to ourselves really have impact. Um, we have, you know, we all have seen or heard people who have negative things to say, you know, about, you know, like, oh, I'm always making this mistake or, oh, I'm so stupid or whatever. And that negative self-talk really can pull you down, right? Oh, for sure. And so we, we are talking about, hey, let's, let's figure out how do we change that, that, what do you call it? The story in your head, your, the story you tell yourself and the impact that the unconscious or subconscious mind has. And, and when we say these things out loud, um, and we repeat them. And, you know, there's some professionals who say, who really believe in this. And they say, you know, having this positive self-talk, saying these things in a certain way really impacts your life. And um, there's three characteristics we like to remember to help everyone um, is the three P's. Um, and it's being positive in what you say, make sure it's present tense and it's powerful. Yeah. Um, and, and make sure that you're elevating it. It's not just, oh, I'm smart, but how do you say that? And where do you say that? I know Matt has some ideas of, um, he likes to share of when's the best time that we do that. You know, I guess one of the things that I've always tried to convey is that if you, uh, have to nourish your physical body three times a day, it makes good sense, right? You eat a breakfast, you eat a lunch, and you eat a dinner. Um, but many times, most of us are not nourishing our subconscious mind right. and putting ourselves in a position to win. Yeah. And so there's some uh, younger kids that we've worked with. And what we've had them do is while they sit down to eat for those three meals, we recommend that they say something, an affirmation to themselves that helps lift them up. And it may be different for everybody. But those are the best times we found, you know, you're nourishing the physical body, now nourish the, the emotional side as well, and that uh, subconscious. Yeah, and keep them short and powerful. You know, yeah. like, I think some of the things we've taught the kids to say is, I am strong. Sure. I am strong. And then, you know, you some have a theory that you repeat it 10 times, do it three times a day and repeat it 10 times. Right. Um, and I noticed when I personally did that, you know, you, it just, it kind of makes you feel stronger inside. And I almost had to take, make note cards for myself, you know, and, and any chance like sitting at a stoplight, you know, and this is a great time that parents can do that with their kids because we all can say, I am strong. I am brave. And it's about repeating it and making sure you, you believe it. Um, and it's, it's not, um, I think it's important to remember, we don't just speak it. We really have to say it with conviction. Yeah. You know, and I guess the parallel that I see is if you see sometimes young people that might have anorexia, right. You look at them on the outside and you say, you are perfect. Yeah. You look great to me, but what's the inner dialogue that they're saying to themselves? Right. Yeah, someone who has that um, belief yeah. um, on how they look or um, are presented to the outside world, um, it can be intimidating. And so then they have to change that dialogue in their head. 
and you see them <clears throat> and you can talk to them, but you see sometimes that internal struggle. I, I, I'm not skinny enough or I'm not this or I'm not that. Um, and those things pull us down. Yeah. And so it's very hard sometimes to change that dialogue uh, on your own. Mm -hmm. But those daily affirmations have been found to do that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and start, and I think the recipe is kind of three times a day. It is. Um, um, ten, saying it 10 times if you can. And if you can't, you do the best you can with what you do have. Um, mm -hmm. But it changes really your outlook on everything because... I don't think there's anything that we could say to ourselves over and over again that wouldn't have some impact on us, right? Either yeah. negative or positive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know, have you ever practiced doing that for yourself? Oh, every day, every yeah. day. Yeah. Because I feel like every if, if something negative happens or something doesn't happen, you know, the way I, I planned it out to be, I always say to myself, okay, what positive thing came out of that negative situation? And yes. I always pull a, a positive out of a negative. And mm -hmm. I always look to practice gratitude and to realize what I do have and not what I don't have. And I, you know, doing those things and also just clear my mind, taking at least 10 to 15 minutes just to clear my mind in the morning. And, you know, and I like to practice meditation. I like sound therapy and it, it's very relaxing. It clears my mind and I'm able to focus more on the positive. And then I bring in the, the positiveness and I always, I, I try to stay away from the negativeness and also even negative people, you know, I've yes. noticed too, is that we, sometimes we, if we're around negative people, they will pull us down as much as we might like them. And as much as they might be a good person, they may be very negative. And I don't know if you've ever been around people that have been negative, but sure. you feel like after you've been around them, you feel like a vacuum just sucked all the energy out of you. Mm -hmm. And right. it's not because you don't like them. It's just right. that, you know, their negativity is bringing you down. And then when that happens, it's not like you don't have to stop being friends with them. You just have to separate yourself a little bit and stay around the people that are positive. Reassure yourself every day with positive affirmations look at yeah. what what's great in your life what's good you know what do you have to be thankful for you know how am I going to give myself a little self-love and self-care that's one of the big things about being positive is we have to nourish our mind nourish our body and how are we going to do that so mm -hmm. we think about self-care we think about self-love we think about you know accepting ourselves for who we are and not you know and not being mad that we're not exactly the way we planned out because nothing in life happens exactly the way we planned out we would all love to live in that perfect little house with that white picket fence mm -hmm. but that's just not realistic in today's world so we it have doesn't to, exist it doesn't yeah. exist so yeah. we have mm -hmm. to accept every day for what it is and look at the positive things because you know i feel like we're here and it's like a boot camp and it's a learning you know a learning basis and we take what we learn every day and what can we use you know and put it out there to help others right yeah you know one of the things that reminds me when you said gratitude um Oprah Winfrey, I had seen a show that she did in one of her series, and she said the number one thing that helped her was mm -hmm. a gratitude journal. Yes. And she, every night, would write down things that she was grateful for. Yes. Um, yeah. And so I think that's a really great practice if someone is struggling with that positive self-talk um, to identify those wins that you had that day. Yeah. Yes. I think they recognized... Um, uh, research and, um, and I think Oprah kind of says just three things. Yeah. Um, and so gratitude is, is right in line with affirmations. And so what are the three things you're grateful for and how that can just uplift you every night before you go to bed yes. or when you get up in the morning. But, um, I think a lot of times it's so easy for us all to see the negative things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to, and I'm not sure why it started that we all start, we kind of beat ourselves up, but, you know, I've, I've, I've worked in a career for a while to where, you know, you'd have a survey and people would give you feedback and over and over again. And uh, it was about leadership and everything. And you'd get 10 responses or 50 responses back. And, you know, 90% of them were good. But what did yeah. we focus on? You mm -hmm. know, this one person or two people said something that wasn't, you know, like what, you know, mm -hmm. didn't such and such or whatever. And you, we focus on that. And I think it's just it's human nature, I guess, is what it the is. answer is to that. Um, and it's so interesting that that's kind of the way we were designed or whatever, but um, to look for the good. So, you know, the the good that's out there to gratitude and then to um, have that affirmation and 
and I think pulling the affirmations from where you're struggling, you yeah. know, like if you're scared to do something mm -hmm. and saying, I'm confident, I'm confident mm -hmm. I can get up in front of this group or whatever that might be. Go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah. I think if you can write down the areas, maybe you're struggling in, right. Yeah. Um, if you're a salesperson, maybe it's getting on the phone to make some calls, mm -hmm. right. You know, or it depends on your career and what you're, yeah, in, no, you know, good. so if you're an accountant, you know, maybe, yes, I can do this. I know taxism is coming. I know it's hard, but I can get through this or whatever it might be. Right. If in younger children, sometimes it's about making friends. Yeah. It's, it's about having the self-confidence to sit in a class, raise your hand and ask a question actually participate and and we all know uh, learning um is an engaging sport if you will yeah, right. Um, yeah. right you know you have to ask questions and you have to be there um to actually understand it sometimes not right. all the time but sometimes when you don't quite get it um that little clarification can mean all the difference in the world and so we want to make sure that all of our people have that internal self-confidence that will give them the ability to participate not only in life, but participate in the conversation yes. and not acquiesce and not step back, but make sure that you actually are engaged, you know? And so um, if, if we wanted to construct a sample affirmation, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that um, we have, we struggle, I don't know, maybe to get up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it's tiring. So, you know, you want those things to be positive yep. um, and you want them to be present. And so, you know, maybe we could, what yeah, would be an sample, example yeah. so, of one that we could um, construct? So if we want it to be powerful and positive and present tense, and, and we need to make sure we're not, I am going. So I am getting up excited and alert and ready to go. And, yeah. you know, keep it short. And for kids, that would be easier. You know, I love waking up every day, you know, or something like that. But yeah, they, they should be short and they should be positive and powerful. Um, I am, like I said a few times, we have the kids say, I am strong. I am brave. You know, yeah. I am aware. I am a good listener. Um, and so find, helping our children sometimes find where they're struggling um, and you don't have to talk about it with them, but just say, you know, mm -hmm. um, I I love eating breakfast every day for somebody yeah. who maybe doesn't like, you know, you have a child who isn't a good breakfast eater or something. And, and if you keep saying that, you know, and reminding them, well, you know what, Johnny, you love eating breakfast every morning. And then, you know, they, they keep hearing it and they keep working and it will change. Sure. It, it takes time. Yeah. You know, um, and so after you sit down with someone and you can construct some maybe for the morning and the afternoon and the evening, you know, they're best actually performed out loud, mm -hmm. right. uh, you know, and they're really best performed almost sometimes in front of a mirror, right. believe it or not. Yeah, um, I believe you it. Know, and that helps reflect that on you. Um, but one of the exercises that we would have the children do if they were uh, being, let's say, a sourpuss that day, okay, <laughs> they weren't um, engaged, um, we would have them sit there and just smile only, <laughs> not do anything um, for 15, 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. And you'd be shocked at how that changes the endorphins in your body. Yes. And you didn't even do anything. I agree. You just, you just smiled. Yeah. And one of the statements we always had the children say is, I can always do better than I think I can. And I think we all can, you know, um, live by that one. Um, I can always do better than I think I can. And mm -hmm. if, if you yeah. just taught your children to say that once a day, every day on the way to school or whatever it might be, how could we not, how could they not elevate and feel a little bit better about their opportunities that, you know, because all of us, I can always do better than I think I can because we sell ourselves short, I think yes. a lot of times. Yeah. And, you know, I really believe parents have a lot of teaching moments that appear if you can latch on to them. Yeah. Meaning if you had uh, one of the things that we would see in martial arts was that it might be difficult for a person to break a board. Right. They would really, you know, Hesitate. The, before yeah. they come, <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. And, and, and there's so much self-doubt that they can instill that by the time they get to us right. in the school, and by the time they're sitting in front of that board to break it, mm -hmm. they've already defeated themselves. Yeah. They didn't even, right? Yeah, and, and that's that's a key component that martial arts would teach. And if anybody is taking martial arts currently, um, that's what they your your 
should be working on with your your instructor, you know, is they should be teaching you how to overcome these things. And when you look at that board, I'm going to break that board, not, oh, I'm scared or, oh, this is going to hurt my hand, but I'm going to break that board. And you see, they always teach you to punch all the way through the board, sure. not to the board, but yeah. through the board, you know, so there's different <laughs> techniques. And, and I think a really important piece too, is that parents are demonstrating you know, because I know I've caught myself saying, oh, shoot, that was just stupid, you know, yeah. and we shouldn't be, you know, I never, I don't think I've ever said I'm so stupid, you know, but what we say our kids see and our yes. kids emulate. And so as adults, at minimum, if you just dial back your negative talk and make it more positive, like, you know, I'll get it next time. So we would encourage parents. So let's say that it was hard for them to do break that board. Or right. Let's say it was hard for them to study for that test. Right. Or actually walk on that soccer field, right? Or being intimidated by those things. Um, those, so let's say it took two times, three times, four times, they got through it. Yeah. Now parents latch onto that. Yes. Remind the kids when they mm -hmm. hit another obstacle in their life, where you can say, hey, do you remember you didn't want to walk on the soccer field? Took three or four times. You finally got comfortable and you had a good time. You did it. You did it. This yeah. is the same. Give it a little bit of time. You'll right. do great. And that way, those teaching moments, if you can bring those back to them, will empower them to say, you know what, you're right. I, I was able to do whatever. I, I got an A on that test. I was able to study. I was able to do that activity. Um, now that empowers the kids to say, you know what, if I could do that, I could do this. Right. right? And sometimes parents, it's it's our job to remind the kids of those accomplishments. Yeah. That they got under their belt. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and that empowerment gives them that fortitude to keep going. Yeah. And I think remembering that it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, can you get some results? Sure. But I think it's the consistency and, and research has shown it's, it's really doing it over and over. And so don't give up, you know, yeah. don't give up on saying the positive things, um, and keeping those tips in line of, you know, the three P's and, and making them strong. And there's also, you know, some children struggle and they, they need X amount of attaboys, right? Yeah. You, you, you know, you've done a great job. And, you know, I, we had one student that um, I think it was for every uh, negative thing they heard, we had to give them, I forget yeah, what it was. It was like five or so. Five or seven attaboys to overcome that one negative thing because that student focused so much on the thing that they were not able to do yeah. instead of the good things they did. Right. You know? um, and, and we, if we can help encourage them to focus on just like we talked about the gratitude, you, you did this well today and this turned out good. And, and this was even better than you thought. Mm -hmm. and take those ones that are negative yeah. and just put a cap on them in that they don't rule your life and they are not taken over and you have control, just exercise it and use it mm -hmm. and you'll get to where you want to be, you know? Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot more conversation on, on it nowadays than maybe when we were little, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. but I do remember my dad specifically was a, always a positive, you know, um, inspiration, like, oh yeah, you can do it, you know, and um, it didn't take a whole lot of conversation, but he really just was always trying to give you the courage to lift you up. And, um, but now there's so many good books on it and uh, resources. Um, but yeah, I think it's an important piece to remember. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, uh, you know, I've seen families that sometimes have a self-imposed limitation that doesn't belong. You know what I mean? No, yeah. I've heard them say, you know, we are X, Y, Z. Yeah. We're the Andersons and we. We whatever. never have good luck. Yeah. So. Or <laughs> we, we've, yeah. we're we always the last to eat in line or we're no, every time we go, they never have our food or yeah. what, you know? And so I've seen those kind of things, you know, and then, yeah. then you see the exact opposite, you know, where I, I have, a, a, let's say a brother-in-law that. He envisions before he drives anywhere that he's going to get a parking spot in the front row. Yeah. And he does. He, <laughs> it's incredible. And he believes that into existence. And, you know, and so you see both sides, you know, yes. and, and it, it's, you know, if, if, if you think you can't, you can't. Yeah. And if you think you can, you can. Right. And so yeah. 
that positive self-talk really will generate and manifest itself really in your life in all areas. And so- And you had mentioned earlier, Stacey, about who you hang around with, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because we all have a- have met or known or have someone in our life who tends to spend spend their energy on the negative mm-hmm. and um hard, sometimes we don't know like we'll leave a relationship or a conversation when you feel drained or you just feel less like wow that's you know now i'm a little disappointed or you know disenchanted with the world and yeah. i think recognition is a huge piece too to say um you know wow, how do I feel after that conversation? And then yeah. what is it about them? And um, not that, yeah, you cut them out of your life specifically, but yeah. you, sometimes you can be that beacon of hope. Sometimes right. you can be that person of inspiration and help them. And and sometimes there's, there's you can't, but yeah. it's recognizing and, and what's good for you and maybe limiting the time that you spend. But um, with parents to kids, I think it's really important as uh, um, the adults and the parents uh, recognizing when what you say to yourself when you're yeah. around your children, because what do we know? They're sponges. They pick up what they hear and then they start to repeat the same dialogue. And okay. I've seen over and over again, especially with uh, little girls and their moms. Um, if the mom looks in front of the mirror and consistently says, oh, my hips are too big or oh, I need to lose, tw- you know, 10, 20 pounds. Yeah what do we see? Then the girls have that dysmorphia in their, their mind too, about their body yeah. figure. And, and it's really, really crucial, I think, for parents to be on their game. Um, and yeah. I know it's hard. It's just another thing we're asking to do, but you know, you pick and choose what you can be better at. And so I think this is an easy one and it helps you as the parent um, and the adult to kind of switch your mindset. Yeah. 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 You know, there's, um, um, I I might just do a little exercise with you, Stacy, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Just oh, I don't know, mind. This is it. Might sound silly, but um, so one of the things that we would generally do is let's say that you brought your children in and wanted to take classes. You know, so I would say something to you like, you know, Stacy, do you know anyone that's an adult that lacks self confidence? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I would say, I'm going to ask you to just give us the first name of that person, okay, right. that, that you know that's an adult. So, Stacy, do you know of anyone that lacks self-confidence in your life uh, that's an adult now? Can you give me their first name? Yes, I can. So. Who would that be? Go ahead and share just their first name. Okay, Marie. Okay, so thinking of Marie, how is her low self-confidence affecting her personal life she is not able to excel in life and reach the goals that she's capable of reaching wow i mean that is huge how has that affected her professional life it has caused her to not um apply for jobs that she's well capable Mm -hmm. of doing she um she goes to and she she accepts jobs that are below her and she is not able, with all her education and knowledge, she's not able to excel to the levels that she is capable of doing. That break, Okay, so knowing and hearing all of that, that breaks my heart to hear for her. I don't yeah. know her. Because you right? see it. You see she's capable, yeah. And you know that she's got it in her. Yeah. She just lacks the confidence in herself to do those things, you know? Yes. I... You know, I had one mom that I was talking to Mm -hmm. and she said, I married the wrong guy. (laughs) Right. Yeah. She's like, I never could speak up that this is not who I want. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being 20 years later, three kids later. Yeah. And she still said, I married the wrong person. (laughs) You know, and, yeah, and a lot of times when men will do that exercise with people, it's the person that they're talking to. He, yeah. They're like, it's me. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's me who lacks the self-confidence. And then he'll say, how has that held you back? And they'll say exactly what you kind of said. Haven't yeah. achieved what I know I can do, maybe, you know. And and so then what I ask them is I say, OK, mom or, you know, dad, um, do you want to avoid that for your child? Right. Do you want them to have that? Uh, strong self-confidence or weak self-confidence right because it comes from you yes you empower them you lift them up if they are struggling it's okay we all do 
Mm -hmm. find something positive, mm -hmm. help support them. You know, yes. uh, one of the things that we would have our students do, uh, we call it a happy board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would have them think back. What were some of the things that you, that really you got enjoyment out of? Right. And it might be playing with the dog. It might be playing with a cat. It might be uh, going outside, going outside yeah. on a swing. It might be a teeter totter. It might be running or riding your bike or going to the lake, whatever it might be. And we would have them actually take those and print them off, find images on the web, mm -hmm. put it on a poster, hang it up. And that way, when you start to struggle mentally, yes, look at that happy board and pick those things out and dwell Focus. on them Focus on for that, a yeah. short time to help get you out of that funk, so to speak, right? Yes. Um, and, and really understand, you know, there is happiness and joy in your life. There are things that you do derive it from, even though this little hiccup is, it's okay. We all have them. Yeah. And, you know, so um, there's ways to help everybody if you invest the time. Yes. And the care, right? Yes. And so, um, especially with your children, they're going to go through a maraud of ups and downs, friends, teachers, school uh, always yeah but if if we can get them to talk positively to themselves and they have high self-confidence yeah then they can take those things on and weather that storm and get mm -hmm. through them and and you know be yeah. resilient as as parents talk about um and and have persistence right um but when they don't have that positive self-talk the world negative negativity can come in so easily yes. without you knowing it and yeah. seeing, uh, you know. And it takes a little work, like we said, you know, there's some things you have to think about, but it's really compared to the outcomes and the benefits you can get from it, way, way, way worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, one yeah. of the teachers that I had, they'd say, you know, there's a thief that's mm -hmm. coming to take something from your child. Yeah. And what they're trying to take from them is not their money. Mm -hmm. It's not their clothes. Right. They're trying to take their self-confidence. Right. They're trying to take what makes them who they are. Right. And if that thief succeeds and they take a part of them, yeah, they're going to be limited the whole rest of their life. And it breaks your heart to see that. Just yeah. like the person that you had said, you see in their personal life, they could be achieving some so much more happiness. You see in their professional life, they, they have it in them to excel so high, but they don't trust themselves. Um, yeah. And and then when it comes to sometimes those interpersonal relationships as well, they don't strive really to the person that would make them happy the rest of their life. And, right. and they're afraid to push on those things. And now, now more than ever, too, we know social media uh, presents, you know, everyone's life is wonderful. Yeah. And, um, you know, kids are really feeling the the pressures of that. And I'm not saying it's all bad, but we notice there's so much more uh, internal judgment because we're like, oh, I'm not doing that. Or, oh, they have that. And I don't have that. And so it's so much easier to look and um, and feel slighted or less than. And, and so if nothing else, it's really uh, taking that time to kind of keep yourself moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And it may be less social media, you know, right. maybe if they continue to compare themselves to others, and that's driving them down, you know, maybe the good recommendation is now you, you just have shorter time on social yeah. media, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I think the key points, you know, is we found is it's um, keep it short and simple, you know, mm -hmm. pick one, two or three things to say every night, 10 times, um, you know, and repeat that one. And, and over time, and when I say over time, I'm confident you're going to see changes in your life within, you know, I know with the gratitude is like three months, they say, which sounds like a lot, but when you consider how long your life is, yeah. it's not, but yeah, stick with it um, and keep them powerful, positive and present tense. And um, I think it's going to be a great first step to help in um, yourself, if not only your children be more oh, successful. hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what are some of the services that you offer on your site? So we, um, right now, what we want people to do is just uh, learn uh, what we would call transferable life skills or character leadership skills monthly. 
Yeah. And it's real simple. If you bite, uh, take a little uh, mm -hmm. bite-sized piece every week and you build that foundation is what we encourage them to do, very quickly, you start to see an increase in that positive self-talk. Okay. You start to see them increase their self-confidence. And so part of our service offering does that yeah. without them recognizing it. It helps not only the children, but it also helps the parents see yeah. that in their children. Right. And so, so it's, yeah, it's within the design of uh, our program is that, yeah, we pick one thing um, and then we work on it through the week. Um, it's very organic learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's simple things that you do to help your child be more successful. Um, and then they, they get a, a taste of it. And then you pick, you get to decide as the parent, like, this is something I really liked for them, or they really enjoyed it. And it's yeah. a valuable life skill um, that can help elevate them. And so being a part of like, just taking your time and going through it and um, yeah, putting that in place. And like we say, it takes 10 minutes, 10 minutes a right. week. And uh, you can really change the trajectory of your life and your child's life. If you invest in anything, I think I've seen over and over again, um, if you spend 1% um, or an hour a week of your day um, doing something that you want to learn something new, yeah. that you could be really, um, uh, I want to, what's not, not the words, not professional on it, but you could be an expert. There you go. Mm -hmm. You could be an expert on it in a matter of a couple of years right. um, because you just take that little bit. So it's like our habits that we've talked about before. It's yeah. taking those little, little steps, but over time they make a huge impact. They do. And we've, you know, and so we've learned that the schools are so busy with their current Academic, teaching to the yeah. test and mm -hmm. those type of things that some of the character development and leadership skills that maybe used to be present are no longer present. So right. we're not teaching children uh, how to have better focus, right? Mm -hmm. In school, we're, that's in what school. we do. Yeah. Right, right. Our program does, yeah, but the yeah. schools don't, yeah. right? The school and so that. the schools don't teach children how to be a better team player, right? Yeah. The schools don't teach the children respect of people and property, right? right. Um, and and we the schools aren't teaching discipline and so many of the the, the life skill attributes that we uh, want for our children yes. that help set them up for success are not being taught in the schools. And so yeah. our- and it starts at home. It yeah. does, it yeah. does. So our service offering really is those uh, duplicatable pieces that will elevate your children not only internally, but externally. And that's so important. Oh, so it's, uh, um, yeah. So so that's what we do is help uh, people not only learn the concept, but actually use it in their life. And that's the difference. So that that's how those changes are made. And it happens over a one year period. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's how you want lasting change. We don't, yes. you can't just... Uh, children or adults, you know, it'd be nice if we could one time do it. And now we all <laughs> learned it. Yeah. That's, that's not the case, you know, uh, behaviors start and uh, hopefully transition into positive habits that will pull us through the rough of times in our lives. Right. Yes. So if someone develops a positive habit of exercising daily, mm -hmm. right. Um, and, and things aren't going well, a lot of times that exercise in that day is a bright spot. Right. You know, and so those are the positive things that we want the children to develop when they're younger so that it will increase that positive self-talk and, and get them to. You just, yeah. You just have to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So Sooner the better. And we oh, know yeah. we've, you know, you can see three-year-olds as they can start as soon as three with doing all these good things. They're little sponges. They will start early. And as soon as mm -hmm. you start teaching them, they will start, they will start learning and absorbing the information that you provide. And they love it. And they feel better. And that, you know, these good kids become great kids because of these little changes and tweaks. You know, yeah. there there was a saying that I heard Audra say is that most uh and I'll, I'll butcher it, but maybe she can correct me on it. It's uh, as a parent, you're only as happy. Uh -huh. as your unhappiest as child. child yeah 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 we get and some I mentioned that to somebody and they're like oh it sounds like you're enmeshed you know and you're an enabler and I'm like no it's not that's not the the you know every meaning every uh, sentence has a different meaning but for that it's like um you know we as parents we we are a part of our children our children yeah. are a part of us and um yeah if 
we feel their pain, right? We, yeah. we kind of wear their heart inside our hearts and um, right. yeah. And it, I think it's an important piece of being a good parent um, to be in tune with your children and knowing when they're struggling and identifying that, we, you know, we got to turn the ship. We got to right the way of the ship, you know, and get back on track. I agree a hundred percent. Definitely. Now, yeah. where can people find your website? They can go to um, www, obviously, Bruce at blackbeltbruce.com, um, or they just, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I did say it, right? I was going to give you our email, but yeah, or Karam's Little Leaders, um, and that's K-A-R-A-M-S, little leaders, um, dot com because we're about raising little leaders up, and yeah. you know, we start as young as three, and um, yeah, so that's how they can find us. And are you doing any kind of specials or do you do any free trials or anything like that on your site? Yeah, we have some coupon codes and we'll make sure to get those to you since they're, you know, your listeners. We want to make sure to, um, you know, reward them. So, yeah, they can the coupon codes. We'll make sure to get those to you and uh, they get a discount. It's about a 75 percent savings. Yeah. So oh, wow. Yeah. The discount codes that that your listeners have access to are unique. So. Um, we really hope that they're able to take advantage of them and in, incorporate it. Yeah. That's get the join, join in. Yes. I will put those in the description box. So anyone listening, if you go to the description box, you will get the special code with the 75% discount. There so that go. is wonderful. Oh my God, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Matt and Audra. I think you guys provide such a, immaculate, just amazing information. And, a, and these are things that I think are very important because I, I feel that, you know, a lot of times people don't realize how important it is to start young. And it, it's a cycle, you know, it's a cycle that needs to be broken, you know, because one parent does it, and then that other child learns it and then they grow up with these these qualities and characteristics and if they don't become aware of what how how it's affecting their lives and they don't change it then the cycle continues but mm -hmm. if we have classes like this it could help break the cycle and it could help you know parents that have gone through things in life or they're unsure or they want to make better you know little leaders for the future there's so many reasons why your your program is so beneficial, but this is something that that I think every parent or any anybody thinking of becoming parents should look into because it's something that's beneficial. It's something that could help your child, and your child doesn't have to be three years old. It could be older and coming mm -hmm. to your program, and sure. they could absorb and and learn a lot from it. So thank you so much for for taking the time out to teach children, so we have a better generation coming in the future. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Stacy, as well. We really love what you do and we appreciate it. Oh, I love what you guys do. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank right. you. Thank you.